or we'll go ahead and do the, our Super Bowl recap. Absolutely. All right. Uh, perfect. Be, you don't have anything. I to have. Say I do have. Bowl? I do have one thing to say. Okay. I do have a few comments, and that really because I I didn't really care. I mean, I wanted uh, Cousins, right? I wanted him to win because I don't like Mahomes or the Chiefs just because. Kirk Cousins is on the Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Are you talking about Brock Purdy? Yep. There you go. I don't know. <laughs> that is the best and most telling intro to the Super Bowl. <laughs> anyway, it's so great. Anyway, I love it. Yes. And we are back. Dear Lord, it's episode four. Who would have thought this purely self-serving masturbatory podcast would actually get some likes? I am joined tonight by two individuals. And guess what? I'm not going to name either one of them because this makes my editing issues that much more apparent when you assholes have the same fucking name. Congratulations. Anonymity is only going to take you so far with me, motherfucker. I'm crying now. Oh, <laughs> I think you'll be okay. Welcome to episode four of Incredibly Uncensored. What I'm most excited about tonight is that we actually have an agenda, and there's three of us this evening, so we're going to have some fun. We're going to talk about a myriad of issues, some things that matter, most things that don't. But what I can assure you is that we're going to have a good time doing it. Yes? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Hell yeah, let's go. So for those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Johnny B. Good. I'm kind of the brainchild behind this. I don't know how much credit I'm willing to give myself. What do you think? Yeah? You can have all of it. All of it. That's hey, all, thanks it a lot. That's all you. That's all you. <laughs> so my name is Johnny B. Good. I am the Flip Flop Agent. I have a number of different podcasts, some that are respectable, and I'm happy with my parents listening to. Other ones like this one that, Mom, please turn this shit off. This is not for you. <laughs> Just be very clear about that right off the rip. Tonight, I want to welcome our special guest, who I believe will probably be a reoccurring member. We'll see how it pans out. But Mr. Michael Bernard, who you may know from our previous episode where we were recapping the Lions' absolute meltdown in the NFC Championship game. But we had a good time, and I'm happy to welcome to Incredibly Uncensored. Mr. Bernard, how are we doing? We're doing fantastic. I'm uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm... I'm kind of relieved the football season's over. Um, I feel a little more of a weight off my shoulders. I feel like life can go on. It's true. It's uh, it's, it's true. Good. So now we can look forward to the combine. Yeah, and, and then the draft. And the draft, which is so, in Detroit again, so it's gonna I'm, be. I'm fucking pumped. Have you ever been? Did the last draft? Did you go down to Detroit? Of course I did. Did you see? I didn't. I didn't go. I didn't get the experience. And was is it worth it to to go down there? No fucking clue. Because at that point I was still drinking, so <laughs> I don't remember a single thing from that day. <laughs> I remember getting down to Big Beaver, down in Troy. Oh man! But I'm just, and that was about it. What's oh, the, man. what's the exit number there? Uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's exit sixty nine. Hmm. Exit 69. Yeah. Yeah. God bless those I-75 Oakland County planners. They fucking know how to make it happen. (laughs) They still giggle whenever they go by it. (laughs) Oh, I still giggle. Me too. I've been giggling forever. So yeah, we were, we took a party bus down in. No, that was about it. I blacked out at that point. Apparently I was a tremendous amount of fun, but I (laughs) have, I have no recollection. Yeah. Considering the latter, you know, I mean, that's a great time. (laughs) Yes. So this year as a Sober individual, I would love to go down to the draft to see what the Lions could do. I would love to boo Roger Goodell yeah. and remember it because I'm <laughs> sure I did last time. Yeah, that was a good thing. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, I'm very excited. Football season's over. Lots of good things to look forward to. You and I, we're gonna we're gonna kick Mr. X out of the mix here uh, when we do our Super Bowl recap. He might be able to chime in for the first half because he told me he fell asleep at halftime. I went to bed at halftime. <laughs> Before I, yeah, I was done. I, I could have. I'm not going to lie. I, I probably could. Have. I, I just wanted to watch the commercials and I wanted to see if Pat Mahomes could pull it off. and Which he did. And fucking unbelievable. I know. Anyway, we're going to get to that. Yep. We're going to get to that. I'd like to welcome in Mr. X. And the reason I call him that is because I do not feel like editing this much at the beginning. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and just call him Mr. X right off the rip. We could call you X, but then I feel like we're making references to DMX. May he rest in peace. X, the, go, X gonna give it to you. The beloved Rough Riders. Was it wasn't really my uh, 
wasn't really my. That's very, genre. very clear just looking at you. But it, but I love you regardless. <laughs> I, I love you regardless. So, I'd like to welcome in Mr. X. He's been here for almost every episode with the exception of our football episodes. So, it's good to have you back on tonight, my friend. How is it going? It's all right. It's all right. I mean, it can always be worse. I mean, the beautiful part is I take this transcription and I give it to Chat GPT after we've concluded. And Chad GPT always calls Mr. X the man of few words. <laughs> He's always got some good stuff, but he is the man of few words. So I can appreciate a uh, so a, a fellow co-host that maybe doesn't talk as much as I do. So that way there's not too many interruptions. I'm used to it. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. All right. So I got to shake my paper a little bit. Listen, here it is. So we have an agenda. We've done the shit. Yes. Shake your iPad, you fucking nerd. I'm <laughs> All right, so today, here's what we're going to roll through. We've already done a little bit of an intro. The three of us are each going to have a little bit of a talk about this week in tech. Next up, we're going to go to our rant of the week. I know what my rant is. It will be a mystery for who the others are going to rant about. So I'm looking forward to that. Anytime we can get our uh, panties in a bunch, <laughs> you know, sadly, I rolled commando today, but I'm sure I can get something all wrapped up. <laughs> Next up, we're going to do our crimes against millennials. We'll see how that plays out. I think I might let uh, Mr. Bernard and Mr. X take a crack at it, depending on how well they do. I've got one that I keep in my back pocket. And then last up, we're going to talk about a Super Bowl recap and the movie trailers that debuted because there were some doozies. And then last up, we have our listener mailbag. Sadly, nobody wanted to reach out to this. Reach out to us this week. Wah, wah. So I've got a couple things I want to discuss as well. So we'll wrap it up there at the end with some shit that's really inappropriate. So either oh fast forward to the end for some really inappropriate shit, or let's take a listen and kick it off right now. So all that being said, it is time for This Week in Tech. Welcome to This Week in Tech on Incredibly Uncensored. So I think I'm going to take off first and foremost. Okay. Because Mr. X is an absolute Apple fanboy. He has been riding Steve Jobs' jock since the day he showed up in that black turtleneck and released the iPod. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> fair. That's fair. I mean, it's fine. Pre-iPod, not so much. but Oh, see, there it was. It was world-changing. So to be clear, I don't disagree with that. The fucking iPod, the video iPod, it was like their third iteration, I believe. They had the color screen. Yeah, put like but it's still videos. small. Yeah. Yeah. So I had one of those and I fucking loved it. I fucking love that <laughs> thing, but it lost its appeal after that because frankly, I couldn't afford it at the time. I didn't have that corporate money buying me all my Apple products. I bought my own iPod first go around. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Probably not. Oh no, I bought my first uh, iPod Touch. After iPhones came out, I was too cheap. I couldn't afford an iPhone, so I bought an iPod Touch. And it's like me. I'm like a phone. three generations behind on my phone, but I'm okay with it. Because, again, you know, yeah. they get cheaper. Yeah, they, they get, get cheaper. cheaper. And I'm okay with that. So I want to talk about Gemini. So Google released a competitor to OpenAI. There wasn't a tremendous amount of parity between the two. You know, OpenAI has always been roughly three to six months ahead of everybody else, whether it's been Claude or a number of the large language models that have been out there. So Google had Bard and outside of Bard, God, I tried to use it. I tried to use it. I tried to use it. And it just wasn't great. So I've been almost exclusively utilizing ChatGPT. I know you have as well. I don't know how much exposure you have with it, Mikey. Not too much. Not no. too much. No. So I've enjoyed using it from a from a sales and marketing standpoint, which is pretty much the the mode in which I operate. Um, you use OpenAI more for coding stuff, yep. more on the technical side of things, which is great. So all things considered, I was a little skeptical when Google tried to bring everything. They tried to coalesce it all together, and they came out with Gemini. So Gemini has since replaced Bard, and they're integrating it more on the assistant side of things, which I would use for for the voice assistant to turn on Spotify, utilize things in Google Home, you know, be able to set alarms, send text messages, make phone calls, things like that, kind of the hands-free aspect. And I started using it probably within the last week or so when it was finally released. And it's pretty fucking good. 
What, what are you using it on? Just my cell phone. So because I have the Google Pixel line, I was able to replace the Google Assistant that was part of it and go completely, uh, not go away from, but to replace Assistant. So now whenever essentially I use voice search or I say, I think all my shit's on airplane mode at the moment, but if I were to say, hey, Google, then it brings up Gemini right off the rip. And it is pretty damn efficient. So you're saying it's a better version of Bard. Yes. Multimodal that's yes. integrated into your phone. Correct. Hmm. Yep. Integrated into my phone. And you can still go to Gemini.google.com and use it just like you could with your Google account. Right. And it, the nice thing about it, and this is what I was messing around with today, with some of the sales stuff you and I have done in the past, you can actually like at different Google products. So you could add a, like a Google Drive spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. You can add YouTube. You can add Maps. So all these things that are already integrated in your right. phone. So instead of having like the GPT store that we've seen or where you can build your own, you know, GPT assistant of sorts, this gives you the ability to, well, let me back up. This gives you the ability to really integrate if you're in the Google ecosystem. Which I'm sure. I'm all in on Google. So for me, it's very simple to just say, oh, hey, analyze this document that I uploaded. Or let's go to YouTube and give me the cliff notes of a certain video, stuff like that, yep. without having to have additional um, extensions or whatever from the GPT store. So that's what I like about it. So for me, as somebody that's deep into the Google ecosystem already, I have the Pixel phone line, stuff like that. It works well for me at this point. Sure. So if you are a Google Pixel user or you're in the Google ecosystem, I definitely recommend checking it out. And then do some research on why Google is evil. <laughs> <laughs> so the answer is yes. We understand that. Sure. But so the, the fuck is everyone it's else? Yeah. I mean, that's no different with Apple. And Google is just all about convenience. All the companies use Google, and it's yeah. it's I, easy I'm, integration. I, I might make, makes life simple. I, I might make a, a bit of a counter argument that Google's happy to give up your info at the yeah sure at the slightest whim, whereas Apple might give a little pushback. You think they would though? Uh, they they have they they have, and to that point, Facebook had to redo a shitload of their algorithm stuff and their permission stuff, which I do appreciate. But one thing with the Google ecosystem is the same thing. Whenever there's privacy updates and things like that, as far as external non Google applications, you get notified about all that stuff. Sure, like they tell you, like, hey, do you I want? Just... So, like Facebook, as an example, and I'm sure this is the case on your phone. Again, I'm not ultra familiar with the Apple ecosystem, but on mine, Facebook, I make it ask me specifically what photos, like I don't yeah, just give yeah, it yeah. carte blanche to look at my, my camera roll. Sure. You know, cause I'm out here sending wildly inappropriate Snapchats, <laughs> call back to episode <laughs> one. So with all that shit, I don't, you know, I don't need a Google engineer looking at my dong. I just want, I just, I just want to ensure that they're getting cute pictures of my kids I, and shit like yeah, that. Yeah. I guess, I guess I would expect Gemini to be well performing when it's already trained on your email and documents. Yeah, of course. I mean, so so here's the beauty of it. To to that point, anything that's free in the world means that you're the product. Sure. And you're well well aware of that. And so are you. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I mean, when you look at all this, I know I'm the fucking product, but I know that I'm not gonna get fucked in the ass every time Apple decides to make my, you know, planned obsolescence occur with my fucking current uh, version of the iPhone. I don't like planned obsolescence and you cannot tell me that it's not <laughs> integrated into their fucking system. It's bullshit. It's just the general initiatification of everything. I don't disagree. But, I mean, there's that. There's definitely that. So is Gemini, is it free? Yes. Wow. Gemini is a hundred percent free. That's impressive. They, I believe they, it's, it's really new. Like I'm not even sure we're seven days into the release of Gemini. But you can upload, you can talk to it audibly, like you can on the mobile chat GPT. You can upload images. You can give it external links to review. I mean, the whole thing, a lot of the things that are great about chat GPT, but you had to bring in extensions or third-party apps that tied into it. From what I can tell at this point, we're very early in the, in the research stage of it. 
I like it. I, I'm a fan, and it's just another option. I, you know, I can use the same queries yeah, yeah. for both, you know, GPT as well as Gemini, you know, and see what kind of differences I see in the conversation. So for me, I like to, to learn that much more about it. And the more exposure I can get to different LLMs, the happier I am. Hmm. So that's my, my version of this week in tech. So Mr. Bernard, what do you got for me, my friend? I'm not going to lie. That was very informative and I don't have anything that informative. <laughs> However, I did take a look at some of the new products that were coming out. We've seen all the glasses and the visions and all these things that everybody's coming out with. Yeah. So I found this, this new one here. It's actually from a place called Brilliant Labs, which I've never heard of before. Okay. So they claim that these glasses are an AI superpower. Okay. Like and they're and they're 349 bucks. So they're 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 inexpensive. I'm not gonna lie, they're kind of ugly. Um, <laughs> but if this thing takes off, this is something where they can make different designs. Sure. So um it's it's kind of Tony Starked out a little bit. You can you can wear the glasses, you can walk up to anything. You can walk up to food, you can walk up to shoes, you can walk up to something at the grocery store. And when you look at it, it's all voice activated. You can tell it to, you can tell it to, uh, I had to burp. Sorry. That, I, I was like, <laughs> what is he doing? Um, but no, it, it says that you can do everything from landmarks to, uh, nature. So you can look at a tree and say, what is this tree? And it'll tell, it'll give you a spec. It's got an overlay on, on the lenses. Exactly. Oh, nice. Um, so it can't, I guess it can do, it can do just about everything that the Apple products can do. But the biggest thing is that the Apple glasses are like 600 grams. So can you imagine wearing those things on your head right. and just coming down? These are only 40 grams. They're small, they, but they're, Ooh. they're circle lenses though, which is like a, like a, just a pair of glasses, just a pair of glasses. Hmm. So it's I'm got a charger look. on the nose port up here. It's just a, it, you can get them in prescription if you're, if you actually need, you know, prescription glasses or whatever. But if not, I thought that would be pretty cool just to be out in the world and be able to just kind of look around right. and uh, see what kind of trees you're around or, you know, whatever. I well, mean, so let, let me hijack your, yeah, go ahead. your tech for just a hot second. Cause that's a great point. I'm going to have to look into that, but to Mr. X's love of Apple products, I actually love what they've done with their new goggle system. What's it called? Is it the vision pro? Yeah. yeah. No, the vision, the vision pro. pro. And they're, they're like, what, $3,500 or something? Yeah. So I think we're, con I think we're, waiting, we're waiting a couple generations before I agree. we're... I agree. Yeah. I would be excited for an Apple product that sounds like what Brilliant Labs is coming out with. I've never understood VR. Like when Zuckerberg was trying to do the metaverse, yeah. and everybody looked like a fucking me from yeah. Wii Systems. I know. Like, I'm like, this is just dumb as fuck. Like, I have a hard enough time existing in the actual world. I felt the same way. Have you watched your kids? play any vr oh yeah on a meta quest yeah i have not I, they get it we don't yeah yeah it's so this is the part where we're old <laughs> the, it, it it's they're hanging out after school no shit like literally running you know running around yeah. playing games and being so, stupid which is crazy to me have you ever used a vr i have yeah didn't really enjoy it right uh i mean it is what it is but in my perspective, and I'm thinking back to when I watched Minority Report, and you saw, I don't know that I necessarily need targeted ads when I'm walking through a store, but as an example, if I had on a pair of glasses or something like that, I like what the Vision Pro was able to do. Yeah. It showed a guy watching a sports game, and then he was also on X, and then he was looking at stats for the players. I thought some While of that still shit... being to see everything around them. Correct. Yeah, yeah. right. Correct. I, that's what I dig about it. Like the augmented reality side of things. Like I think a pair of glasses like that, that look like a pair of specs. Yeah. Just standard glasses, but they have that AR overlay. I think it would be really yeah. fucking cool. As a motorcycle rider. Right. We've been waiting. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Sure. That'd be for, awesome. For in helmet heads up display. Nobody, everybody. Yeah. I mean, there's been tries, but nobody, nobody's got it yet. Yeah. That would be. That would be amazing. Yeah, they, they I one hundred percent agree. They, my toes curled, and in a bad way because I was watching a TikTok, and this broad gets out of like a, I think a Tesla Model X, and she's got the Vision Pros on as she's getting out, you know, with the with the cable <laughs> going to her cell phone. I'm like, God damn, bitch, you look dumb as I'm... shit right now. But <laughs> in the future, like you said, 
two, three iterations down the line where it is just a standard pair of glasses, yeah. like that's going to be some cool shit that I'm definitely going to want to engage with. Yeah, no shit. Well, Big that's, fan. And that's what I was thinking when I seen this. I'm like, man, I'm like, that, that would be so efficient and so convenient yep. for everything. It's, I hope it doesn't turn into, like you said, targeted ads and stuff like that. I don't want to see advertisements on it, them, but I, I know, <laughs> but I just, I want to be able to see the world around me. And if you want to pull it up, you can just tell it to pull up. hundred percent. You know, and I I'm, know, I'm think... a fan. So brilliant labs, brilliant labs. Brilliant labs. Yeah, All right. It... I'm going to put a link in the show notes to everything we're talking about. Cause this shit's cool as hell. <laughs> yeah. I'm digging it, is, it for sure. It, it is super cool, but that's all I got for tech I this week. It. I love it. That was a good one. All Perfect. right, Mr. X, you're up. What's we're, your, uh, we're going to keep in tech. We're going to keep riding that, uh, AI train. Hell yeah. I mean, so at Grok, G R O K. Oh yeah. Not K Q. Ah, G R O Q. So uh, this isn't the Elon Musk. This is not the X version. This is not the Elon Musk. Okay. I I wouldn't be surprised if he's got some money in here somewhere. Sure. sure. But uh, so Grok is the the fastest LLM available because, and here's where it starts to get crazy. They have developed their own language processing unit, their own silicon that handles the end-to-end processing. Um, that's faster than a GPU or a CPU. By so own. is this available to you, everyone or is this like proprietary shit exclusively it's, for it's them? It's proprietary. It's for sale. Well, of course, everything's for uh, sale. Yeah. Baby. Welcome to it's capitalism, motherfucker. Probably not quite consumer level yet, but um, it, it will be. I like it. I, I, I mean, my, that's, my, that's my estimation that it's going to become mainstream and the questions that I have are, is this going to uh, impact NVIDIA's market share yeah. that they completely own right now. Well, I think at this point, it sounds to me like NVIDIA is looking at uh, M&A mergers and acquisitions. With? with Do you think so? With Why not? If you're already standing at the top and somebody's nipping at your heels to try to knock you off the hill, it's better to give them a hand up and say, let's work together. So you, you think it will be a buy and kill off or a buy and develop? Buy and develop. There's no way you they would kill it. Not if they can further increase their market share and their absolute stranglehold on the AI market. Because it's only going to continue to grow and develop and get stronger and stronger and stronger. I'm really disappointed at this point that it's not publicly traded and I can't get money into this. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, I know some guys that are accredited investors. Maybe we I can. It's not on Robin hood. I just, I don't have the funds uh, to be clear. <laughs> fuck Robin hood. I just watched dumb money again last week. So fuck Robin hood. They're a bunch of pieces of shit, dark pool trading and all that shit. That's another topic for another day. We can bring that up because that, fucking pisses me off so on the on the tail end of grok i yeah. wanted to give a shout out to uh to meta of all companies and to old zuck to the zuck uh yeah i'm as surprised as you are but in the last or well, the beginning of this year he's come out and said that he is committing to open sourcing all the models that they create including agi should they achieve it wow i don't believe it I was just gonna say, what's the loophole? Like, what? <laughs> no, like, I was already thinking it. Like, so there's there no is. way. I, it fits into their business model. Uh, so the more people that use and test their models, the better they become. It's true. So they reintegrate the improvements back into their workflows. That's true. Okay. So again, the people using the product yep. are there for the product. Yeah, and that's how they do it. Let's and if you have, like you just said, if you have a company that's on the rise and you know, why not just give them a hand up? Yeah. You know, and made us huge. Oh, yeah. They they got their ass in everything. Oh, yeah. So to that point, though, and I think they discussed this on, um, on All In in regards to, like, Reddit, you know, looking at the information repositories that are on the, the interwebs that they weren't able to train these initial LLMs on. You know, whether it was like Quora 
or Yahoo Answers or Reddit or whatever else. With Reddit most likely hitting an IPO in 2024, who do you think, which company is going to invest the most into that to become a strategic partner where they can pull the repository of data off of Reddit and use that to train their models in an additional fashion? My understanding is that, and I'm not sure the exact Chinese company, but I'm not sure it really matters, but that there's already a 40% shareholder by China in Reddit. So I think that ship may, ship may have sailed already. Interesting. Okay. I'm going to look into that more because I'm very curious about that. Because I'm watching that IPO like a fucking we, hawk. I, I think, I think, I think with s- almost certainty that prior to the API changes that were imposed on both X and Reddit and mm-hmm. everything else, that every model was trained on all those data sets. Mm. Interesting. I don't know. There's a lot of people that don't think that's the case. Because, I mean, Reddit's been around since... Man, I, I don't know. Five? It's... 2005? I don't know. I was still reading Slashdot at that time. <laughs> this, this motherfucker. <laughs> it was the early 2000s. For sure. It was the early 2000s. But, I mean, you're looking at... Let's just make it a round number. 20 years worth of data. And a lot of it's fucking garbage. Right. And porn. <laughs> A lot of it's garbage and <laughs> yes, porn, right. but there's a lot of value out there. You can too. learn some things from that, dude. I, Reddit is everything that I search. I, yeah, there's Reddit's some, wild when you, because it's when so, you're looking it's so collaborative. A specific subreddit, and yeah. you, you it's and like it an instant yeah. uh, instant access to the expert. Yes, because yeah. you got to weed through it, but yeah, sure. it's still there. Hundred percent. I I would say probably eighty percent of my search queries that I put into Google always have the ending Reddit at the end. Just so that I can look through, you know, what are the top 10 or 12 posts right here? Sure. You know, let me get that information. So interesting. I'm going to look into that more about Reddit. So is that it? That's it. That's it? That's it. Dude, nerdgasm has commenced. We are finished with this week in tech. All right. Let's get the agenda back out here and look like professionals. All right. So we've done this week in tech. Uh, next up is the rant of the week. It's time to do some ranting on Incredibly Uncensored. I absolutely love it. All right, Mr. X, you are first on the docket today, my friend. So, welcome to this week's rant with Mr. X. What do you got for me, my friend? Well, we're going to talk small town politics. (laughs) No, no, we're not. (laughs) Oh, my God. We don't don't have time. (laughs) You municipalities, you are the worst. (laughs) Uh, We're going to, I'm going to keep rolling with uh, technology. Perfect. And we're going to talk about home internet prices. Oh, we ranted. We ranted recently about the crazy costs of streaming services. Mm -hmm. And I think this is right on the heels of that. Um, And in our area, we've got two choices. Yes. Well, maybe most people have one, but but it's going to be, I have one. It's going to be spectrum or it's going to be Comcast. Right. Both of which are overpriced, under delivered, mm-hmm. and one of them comes with a data cap. Yes. What year the what year is it? Cap? Yeah. Comcast? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, That's what, unbelievable. What year is this? Right. So it's like we're sending faxes to Susan again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I had Frontier at my house this morning. Okay. To install some fiber. Well done. Yeah. So Frontier comes out. With symmetrical service, so you're you're getting the same download speed as you are upload, unlike cable, who's going to give you about a tenth of your download speed as upload. So to be clear, that media server that I want to do is now going to be housed at your house, <laughs> just, just so that we're clear on that. So, so they come out, their base product is 500 meg symmetrical. So five hundred up, five hundred down. Holy shit! Twenty five dollars a month. What? No fucking way. Twenty five dollars a month. Is that like an intro price? Like, hey, we've got you for twelve months. No, Are no you contract. Fucking serious? Okay. So, god damn it! This is why I love the, competition. The yeah. cheapskate. Welcome to competition. Welcome to capitalism, bitch. The cheapskate over here went with one gig service. 
shit. For $45 a month. Oh, Oop. my god! Holy shit, you fucking nerd. But that's amazing. $45. So, so that's my one, rant. That's one gig down and one yep. gig up. That yep. It's unbelievable. And fiber right in the house. Holy shit. Wow. So my rant is it's time for people to cut the cord on cable. Yes. yes. Either via Holy Starlink shit. or via. dollars Yeah. I didn't realize that because, yeah. I mean, I'm paying. I want to say that once I updated my modem because I have Spectrum. Spectrum also, fuck you. Um, I think I'm getting around 200 up and like 80 down. Which is fine. Or yeah, I'm sorry. 200 download, 80 upload. Upload, right. But I think it's still close to 70 or $80 a month. And that's yeah. the only thing that we have. And in the they house raise fine. the price every other yeah, month. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Don't every tell 12 you. months, oh, you up, always, upkeep speeds and shit like that. It's like, yeah. fuck. You always got to call and tell them that you're going to cancel. That's what I do. Because I cut everything but the modem too. Right. So I get, it's funny because I get the the ultra because all five of us on at the same time, mm-hmm. TVs start lagging or whatever. So sure. I got the 500, but I get 500 down and 80 up. Okay. So we have the same exact up speed. Um, <laughs> but I just, I actually just redid my deal three months ago or so and got it down to like 46 99 a month. So the installer today. So it's not terrible. The installer today tells me. As the fiber crews are going through town, Spectrum sales reps are following and visiting every neighborhood and knocking on every door, <laughs> offering two-year contracts. Okay. When's the last time Spectrum offered you a contract? I would guess 10 to 15 years. At least. I've never been on contract with them, I don't think. Yeah. So they're trying to play some defense, but... 25 bucks a month is going to eat their lunch. Oh, for a much better service. For a way, for <laughs> At a least way for better now, service. it's better. Well, yeah. I mean, I <laughs> so, guess. So, yeah, we need stability. Some, episode 15, we're going to have to get an update. Yeah. And you're going to have to let us know, like, okay, it's been a couple of months. Things are good. So, or things have gone absolute dog shit. So, the sales pitch, since I'm just making commercial out of it. <laughs> Frontier, pay us, motherfucker. <laughs> I th- two gig is like a hundred bucks. Five gig is like a hundred and fifty. Holy What's shit! What's their top speed? Right now is five gig. So wow. the installer was saying there are some people that have multiple five gig feeds. Dude, that's fucking. <laughs> but you know what? I mean, I have four kids. Both boys want to start streaming. You know, yep. I'm on the internet constantly. All of our devices are always streaming on a fire stick or some fucking thing. Yep. So, I mean, having those types of speeds and knowing that I'm not going to be lagging, buffering, <clears throat> doing any bullshit like that, dude, how can you beat that? 45 bucks a month. And I mean, because you have all older kids, they're yep. probably on the internet a lot. So, I mean, all things considered, if you're going to be happy at $45 with a gig, that's probably going to be more than yeah. sufficient for what I need. Oh, well, right. even the 500 is more better than what you can get. Well, it's better than sure. everything through, yeah. through Spectrum right now, so, at least price-wise. So sure. get your crap together, Spectrum, Comcast. Yeah. No, be competitive. <laughs> no, essentially, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, Go the way of the dinosaurs right. and be done with it. So are they going to buy Frontier and then ruin it? Well, Frontier is actually owned by Verizon. Uh, yep. oh. That's what I was going to say. They were owned by they Verizon. They have a great they're overlord. Up, yeah, they're putting up fiber and telephone and everything everywhere right, right now. So Right. Well, and I end up, I actually have the infrastructure has been put in place. They did the directional boring in my subdivision, and I have the conduit for them to run the fiber lines in my neighborhood. They just haven't ran them yet. But once they do run them, ding, ding, motherfucker, yeah. I'm making that call because I'll be, God damn, that's a great fucking price. Holy you're gonna, shit. You're going to have to battle the spectrum rep that's right behind him, though. Bring it on, bitch. <laughs> Yeah. offer a better I, deal i don't know don't offer me another yeah. deal fuck you it's got to be 15 a month no it won't take you. any less it's 15 dollars a month for two years it's is, that's the only way you're getting free, it free and i want a fucking glory hole blow job that's how we're gonna make this and i'm deal still happen. buying frontier <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm gonna throw a towel at you until you get the fuck off my property <laughs> please mom if you're listening to this turn it off yeah. please god 
All right. I guess it's my turn. Yeah. I guess sure. it's my turn. What do you want to bitch about? So I, w- I just want to bitch about the fact that we're, we're in an election year. We're in an election cycle. Things are tumultuous. I'm going to be clear here. I don't like Biden. I don't like Trump. I think they're all fucking criminals in one form or another. But at the end of the day, please, for the love of God, don't spout your political opinions and then let me realize that you really are as dumb as I thought you are. Like, I really don't need it. Just keep it to yourself. Go vote. Absentee ballot. I don't give a shit. Politics, grandstanding, it doesn't matter. You can't change it from within. Your issues with political malfeasance at the municipal level only gets worse the larger the the organization gets. The federal government is not our friends. The state government, they're not our friends. The municipal government, they're not our friends. None of them are looking out for us. They're looking out for them. There isn't a single politician I'm aware of that didn't go into politics and then come out the backside that much more connected with relationships, nepotism, whatever else. At the end of the day, none of this shit matters. The best we can do is take care of our family, take care of our friends, build our own tribe, and just try to get by with as little interaction with those fucking criminals as humanly possible. And also, to be clear, politics in America is broken because the simple fact that we don't have a third, fourth, fifth party that is in the mainstream that's allowed to uh, voice their opinions and go to these debates and be put on the ballot, everybody says you're either voting Democrat or you're voting Republican. Fuck that. I don't agree with that. I think it's wrong. I think that single issue voting is wrong as well. There's, there's so many things that are broken in America right now that the wealthiest people on the planet are paying the least amount of taxes, but it's because the rules are made to benefit them. The people that are in power are doing the things necessary to keep their friends, their benefactors, the puppeteers, the people behind the curtain. And again, this isn't a QAnon conspiracy thing. That's that's not any of it. You can look at Democrats. You can look at Republicans. They're all fucking criminals. I don't give a shit. If you think otherwise, please do some research. Don't just trust me. Do the fucking research yourself because it's so amazing the level of nepotism and the level of incompetency that these people operate our federal government. They could absolutely care less about what it is that we do. And I know I'm putting some broad generalizations out there, and I know some politicians that I truly think are good people. But the system in which they operate is fucking broken. So that's a that's kind of a libertarian anarchist view going hmm. on over there. Maybe, maybe. I don't know if I'm a card-carrying libertarian, <laughs> but... I'll have to check my so, wallet to see if I've lost so my card. What would you think if we moved to like a rank a ranked choice vote? Yes. Okay. I figured. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> one one hundred percent. Because the simple popular vote of Republican or Democrat, it, it's ugh, it's infuriating. And the Electoral College is just God is just such a obnoxious fucking, you know, I'm like mess. The gerrymandering. All of it. All of it. All of it. The whole thing is fucking broken. And I understand, you know, there's a reason for all of it, but it's become so polluted and it's become so polarizing. The problem is now it's just, it's us versus them. Yep. Oh, if you're a Democrat and you're liberal, you know, well, fuck you. I'm a conservative and I'm a Republican. Yep. And it's like, guess what? Fuck you both. Cause I don't subscribe to either ideology. Right. You both have <laughs> facts in features of your politics that I don't have problems with. And then on the flip side, I have tremendous problems with other parts of it. It's just, it's too much. Please, for the love of God, stop listening to the talking heads on Fox, on CNN, on MSNBC, on all this other crazy shit and do the research and try to actually make an informed decision as opposed to just being like, Oh, well fucking, I don't even know celebrities. This movie star <laughs> said that they endorsed this one. And I really like what he had to say. It's like, how the fuck would I ever put any, just they're, any They're confidence. good at pretending to be other people. They must oh. know. <laughs> oh, it's, all right. 
I'm all done because my blood pressure is <laughs> getting high and I'm going to throw this fucking microphone and I don't feel like buying another one. So I'm, I'm leaving it be at that. But please, for love of God, do your own research, please. All right. And even the campaigns, I mean, you look at these and they're, they're all just out bashing each other. Mm -hmm. Like Trump's making fun of Biden. Biden's talking shit about Trump. Haley's talking shit about all of them. Yes. You know, and it's like anything that you see on there, they're all just fucking bashing each other. <laughs> well, like, what are they? That's how they're going to act. Let's be clear. The, if we're talking about Biden and Trump specifically here, sure. let's, let's just kick those two into gear. I wouldn't trust those motherfuckers to drive me to Flint. <laughs> and you want to vote for these fucking geriatric assholes to run this goddamn country? I don't care if they're just figureheads. Fuck both these idiots. Put these fucking grandfathers in their goddamn depends. Yeah. Leave them at the nursing home. Let them play cribbage and fucking send out, you know, tweets on X and be fucking done with it. This shit is crazy that we're even contemplating putting these old fucking assholes, these AARP card carrying motherfuckers into the goddamn White House again. So we're either going to put the other one back in or we're going to reelect this fucking moron. <laughs> these motherfuckers are dumb as fuck. Take your fiber, take your afternoon nap, get the fuck out of my politics and leave my goddamn country alone. So fuck you. Give us somebody that can. I'm getting hot and sweaty yeah, right give, now. I'm give, us, give us somebody that can uh, have a conversation. Okay. So I like Vivek. I like RFK. I like anybody that is not so old. They need help tying their fucking shoes. Right. Their, their handlers allow them to actually talk to the media oh, or the go. press or yeah, do an yeah. interview here or there with and again i'm not i'm not bashing them as people they have good things they have bad things about both of them i, I don't really care go enjoy the twilight of your life i don't need you trying to direct this fucking country because now at this point it's just a big you know puff out my chest and oh i want to you know, I'm taking over because I think I can do it better. And Joe's over there talking to a fucking wall and whatever else. I just, they're all just criminals. Just fucking get out of here. Just ride off into the sunset. I don't give a fuck. I don't want to hear your name. I don't want to be talked about or I don't want you talked about. Just go away. Disappear. So I'm all done. I'm getting hot and sweaty. I need a fucking minute. I'm going to let Mikey take his fucking rant. Because I need a fucking second. <laughs> so my rant isn't quite as descriptive as yours. However, it <laughs> is about just the misinformation about things that you were just talking about. Mm -hmm. it, you can look at the mainstream media or watch the mainstream media and you mm -hmm. get a point of view. You look at Facebook, you get a point of view. You look at Instagram, you get a point of view. You look at X and it is a completely different fucking view than anything else that's on mainstream media or Facebook or anything. And that's another one of my things is like the, just the, the censorship of Facebook. And we know it's true now. Like we know that Facebook censored a lot of things during the previous years, previous four years since COVID. Um, we know they were involved in it and it frustrates the fuck out of me because it'll, it directs people into a certain direction and doesn't really let them make their own choice based on all of the information that's out there. I feel like we should have the access on all platforms to all the information that's out there and let us make a collective decision on our own, you know? Yeah. Um, Cause there's, I'm new, I'm new to X. I didn't do Twitter when it was Twitter. I didn't do X when it was X. I just recently, I'd say within the last three months joined. And to see all of the different shit, not that it's all true, but to see all of the different shit on there mm -hmm. was like kind of, kind of baffling. I was like, holy shit, you know, and you, there's a lot of different viewpoints. Some, some people I think are full of shit, but let me make that decision. Right. You know what I mean? Let me make that call. Um, they still don't allow, um, like hateful shit on there. You know what I mean? Like, right. like general, uh, lies and things like that. There is some things on there that, it's all about perspective and can be twisted however you want to twist it. Well, and I think what I like most about X is they have the, correct me if I'm wrong, I think they're called like community notes. Community notes. So community notes are super cool. So if somebody's out there and they say something, maybe that's not inflammatory, but maybe it's not 100% based in fact, yep. the community almost collaborates and says, whoa, 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 whoa. This doesn't make sense. This isn't right or whatever else. So I have 
appreciated that aspect of what X is doing. Same. And to your point, the problem is now everything is a curated algorithm. Right. So if I look at your Facebook feed and I look at your Facebook feed and you guys look at my Facebook feed, everything's different and curated specifically to the keywords and the things that you interact with. I mean, right. look at TikTok. Exactly. TikTok's the same way. You know, the, the TikTok and algorithm is very, very good because they're listening to me all the time. Hello, China. <laughs> so all things considered, you know, the algorithm is really the more you look at it, the more it feeds into it, the more the algorithm gets built off of it. Right. And then from there, you're living in a fucking echo chamber. That's it. Right? That, that's exactly it. You get to see the same shit over and over and over again, mm -hmm. unless you uh, make a search on Google or something, then it'll change it up a little bit. Just depending a little on what bit. You look. Yeah, just, just a little bit. Yeah, because you'll see like that. It'll be your first ad, you know? <laughs> right. I looked up uh, some guns at Dunham's the other day and I opened up Facebook and that was the very first ad. It was, it was well, a course. Dunham's ad, you know? Yep. And I'm like, these fuck. <laughs> they got everything. Like, I know I agreed to this, but fuck you, you know. <laughs> Still pisses me off. It's a great point. What do you think about that as far as like the algorithms and the feed and the things that you see and the misinformation and everything else? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I don't, I don't disagree, but I, there's a societal fault to be stuck in Facebook or to be stuck in Twitter or to be stuck in whatever sure absolutely and like it, it you're just at that point you're just a lazy person who can't right. leave the the echo chamber yeah yeah absolutely well i mean it's it's a proven fact that they have these like troll farms and shit where mm -hmm. there are people just hired oh, to go on there and just cause a stir because all the monetary value is based on experience you know what i mean an interaction and people not just blowing past your post but they want to see it because it's got 200 comments and right. everybody wants the tea you know what i mean oh, they yeah. all want to get in there and see oh, yeah. see what's good and and yeah. they're going to dig into it and that's where the monetary value is mm -hmm. you know it's it's wild if I you dig into it it's wild. i mean it, it goes more in depth yeah than even this but this is just me bitching about misinformation and oh, I dig just it. not giving us the information that we're so fucking free we're supposed to have right. and, and we just I don't think we all have the whole the whole pie. You know, I think it still occurs though that the whole echo chamber, even on more open platforms like Reddit, like you you can't, yeah, you can't read the comments on a on a political post on Reddit. I one hundred percent agree because it's oh, I have to disagree. You one can read them and have a shitload of fun getting people <laughs> all pissed off. You but can't. but it there seems to be, it's just a one sided echo chamber on every mm -hmm. uh, polarizing topic. Right. Well, and there's so many people on the internet, you're guaranteed to find an opposing view. Oh, for sure. You're absolutely guaranteed. You for know? sure. And if you're having a shitty day and you're sitting at home and you're all pissed off about your day, and you're yep. these motherfuckers, you know, yep. and you get all angry. And... Well, and I think for me, specifically in the post COVID world mm -hmm. and all the shit that we learned about Wuhan and we learned about the fucking you know, the labs over there and the, the way that they were talking about things initially. And then now that the truth's come out about certain things, all it's done for me as a 42 year old husband and father of four is make me that much more skeptical. Like I literally don't believe a single fucking thing unless I can proof it from like six different independent sources. It, yeah. It's like, it's like being a parent. I mean, you, Right. If you're going to trust your children, you, you expect them to be truthful in the small things. Yes. And if right. you can't be truthful in the small things, then we're not ever going to believe you in the large things. Totally agree. I'm in complete agreement with that. Well, and there's three sides to every story. There's your side, there's my side, and then there's the truth. Right. Somewhere there in the middle. Yep. You know, so I mean, it, it's these wildly extreme points of view and people assuming all this crazy shit's happening. I don't think the world is so organized that there's some strange cabal trying to run the entire planet. I think there are a bunch of self-interested, self-serving motherfuckers. Right. They're going to do what they can to serve their own needs. And outside of that, the chips will fall where they will. 
Yeah, I can't imagine him trying to wipe out the middle class. I mean, we front the bills for fucking everything. We're, <laughs> we're the workers. We're the yeah, ones keeping, we're the, we're the, we're the ones keeping the keeping the wheel or right. keeping the lights on. Just keep the economy going so I can keep making my salary and I can live my fucking right. life, you know, right. but leave all the other shit. Just leave there. me alone. Yeah, just leave me the fuck alone, you know. Yep. The libertarian point of view. You want to marry a guy and you're a guy? So be it. I just want to sit at home polishing my guns and smoking some weed. <laughs> That's it. You I know? don't think government should be in marriage at all. I don't disagree. Yeah, me neither. I don't disagree. So live your life how you want to live it, man. Just don't infringe on other people's rights. It just doesn't it seem so easy because there's a there's a lot of views uh, that I agree with that are conservative, and there's a lot of views that I agree with from old old school Democrat, mm-hmm. you know, uh, ways. It just seems so easy to bring all of those viewpoints together, and just get like RFK or somebody. You know what I mean? Like that. I mean, I I don't know if it's him for sure, but. Get somebody like that in there that can just kind of enact yeah. all that. You know what I mean? Like, hey. It, it sure would be nice. Sure would be nice. It just seems so easy, doesn't it? Somebody I, else I, is going to have to do his speeches. God, you ain't kidding. I can't, I can't, can't so listen hard. <laughs> yes, you thought old GW was hard to listen to. You're not well, at wrong. Least, You're not wrong. I, I like the things that he says. No, I just Absolutely. God, it just takes. <laughs> it's really. You got to. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even do an impression. You know, like, it's kind of the same way for me. Yeah. I, I, both of them have very substantive things to say, and they have the knowledge to back up what they're saying. Sure. But good grief, their delivery is <laughs> so hard, so hard to listen to. I don't have any arguments there. I don't have yeah. any arguments. No. But let's be clear. To that point, you two fucking dolts, we can't vote for people based on how good they give their speeches. I don't give <laughs> no, a fuck about no, that stuff. No, but no. On the same token, like it's a popularity contest. Um, that's that's what it is. Yeah. We'll, we'll call it that. But like again, I want someone who can think and articulate those thoughts uh, and okay. back them up. So you can. There's a lot of great public speakers who can't think. You're right. So I, I don't know. Yeah. No, I'm with, with you. you. Yeah. RFK, I mean, probably is a great speaker, but it's, you're right. It's just his delivery. So I don't, what did, did he have throat cancer? Or that wasn't cancer. He had some kind of throat yeah, disorder. Medical... Yeah, he had surgery on it. It wasn't cancer. Something, it was surgery. Something where they're now, his vocal cords are now weak or something. Yeah. Well, and you can tell. It it's, I'll just learn fucking sign you, language. You can I don't tell, give a shit. You can tell <laughs> when he talks, he's as frustrated talking as oh, we yeah. are listening. And I think he's the first to say, like, sure. I can't listen to myself. <laughs> sure. Yeah, how could you, you know? Well, all right. You good with your rant? Yeah, I'm good. You good with your rant? I'm not good with mine. (laughs) Fuck these politicians. But for the sake of brevity, let's move on to our next section. So, crimes against millennials. It is time to look back and remember one of the many crimes against millennials. This is my absolute favorite I section. I still don't think I understand what the heck we're talking about. Listen, all right. <laughs> I struggled. I struggled. I struggled. Do he you, knows exactly what this is about. <laughs> do you understand what trauma bonding is? As an example, let's talk about like September 11th. Okay. That would be trauma bonding. You know, if you were with your spouse, a significant other, if you were at work and you watched a plane hit the second tower. You know, those are the types of things that you would trauma bond over. I'm trying to make it so it's not quite so heavy. So that's why <laughs> last week we talked about Sinbad, fucking Agent Woods, Agent Sims, you yeah. know, the president's son getting kidnapped, Sinbad, you know, get shot. You, you posted sick. a nice follow-up clip. I did. I did. That helped. Put, put a nice one on TikTok. <laughs> still struggling. Helped to clarify it. Oh, but for me TikTok. as a kid, watching first kid, I'm like, God damn. This is some heavy shit for a fucking kids movie. (laughs) You know, like, Jesus Christ, dude, this dude's getting shot and shit's going on. And like, good Lord, President Davenport, pull your shit together, man. Yeah, where's where is he the whole time? You know, the kid is just fucking doing shit. He's the president, president. right? Don't they do shit? Don't get me back on politics, (laughs) asshole. So let's see if you can stumble through crimes against millennials. Give me give me something. What do you have? All right, that's a really good fucking answer. <laughs> so that would be so tough. I had to think about it. I'm like, crimes against and again, millennials. What the fuck? I do have like a list of like 80 fucking things. 
the other day I'm sitting at home and I grab my notebook and I'm like, scribble, scribble, see, scribble, scribble. See, there's scribble, the problem. Scribble. Like, I know I've thought of a couple and I'm like, oh, that's, that's good. Notebook, that's man. good. And then three days later, Frick, what, uh, what was that? I don't <laughs> know. What are we, what is this about again? All right. We're going, we're going back to Mikey. <laughs> Fuck you. We're going back to Mikey. Mikey, this is your, your virginal episode. Yep. For incredibly uncensored. Yep. So why don't you give me what you have deemed a crime against millennials? Y2K. Ooh, that's a good one. I think that that was like one of the first monumental. That's a good one. Computer scares. Yeah. Because nobody knew what was going to happen. The world is going to end. Yeah. Yeah. Legitimate programmers thought that That like shit had the possibility to go down. And a lot of these places were like really ramping it yeah. up on computer infrastructure wow. and stuff well done there sir was, that's yeah. a fucking good one damn Thanks. did your there parents was... buy stuff so my parents for as much as they never gave a shit about us as kids <laughs> they did try to shield us from some of that stuff so in conversations you know 10 15 years later they talked about like yeah we spent the whole previous two years like canning stuff and putting it in the basement and <laughs> we had this and that. and i'm like what the fuck and again at that age it for y2k i would have been 18 years old so i turned 18 that previous november and you know i'm an oblivious kid i'm right. fucking chasing after pussy i'm working a whole, whole bunch i'm still in school so i mean yeah. i wasn't paying attention to my fucking parents i was avoiding them every chance i got so hindsight, yeah, they were fucking prepping like a motherfucker. I, now I look back and I'm like, you fucking crazy assholes. But OK, it is what it is. What about your parents? I, I remember like probably a couple of years after Y2K. Sure. Like going in the back of the barn and, and there's like a barrel that's red. Like, what? <laughs> what is what is in this? It's a barrel of gasoline. Like what? Right. Like a 55 gallon. Yeah. Drum? Just a whole barrel yet well all right we were prepared all the gas pumps are in my computers right do, oh, do no. you remember where you were for uh new year's eve that year yeah i was wildly hammered at my buddy's house okay. <laughs> i can remember thinking like if this goes down yep i wasn't home yep i was at a very um what's the word i'm looking for secure <laughs> it was secure it was it was secure and uh well stocked Okay. Uh, a nice yeah. place, yeah. and I, I mean, where I spent every uh, New Year's Eve yeah. prior to that, and yeah. I, I didn't have any concerns other than our lights going to go out. I don't know. It yeah, was I, it was wild because I remember I had a cell phone at that age. I think I had the old Motorola StarTac. Oh man! So I had the Showing Motorola StarTac. It was like the triple color screen: the red, green, and blue was the screen. It was like a tricolor screen. Flip phone. It was I, awesome. I can picture, but I don't remember the colors. Fucking loved it. Paid a lot of money for that as a kid. I was not smart with my money when I was younger. <laughs> you were cool though. But I remember I was fucking cool. <laughs> he had. But I remember he had a tech vest in every color. <laughs> I did. I still have a few of them. As a matter right of fact, yes. I got my. Uh, so funny story. Side note: I had my senior pictures taken up in Deerfield, that little plaza right there in Deerfield, just south of. Um, M90. M90, yeah. Yep. So I had my senior pictures taken there, and one of my pictures was in, like, a white pair of cargo shorts (laughs) and a red Hawaiian shirt. With some crazy bleached blonde hair? Yeah, it was fucking dope, man. I was a bad (laughs) motherfucker. I'm going to put that picture in the show notes. Puka necklace? Huh? The the little shell necklace? Yeah, the puka necklace. Fuck yeah. I I had one of those, too. I had the the metal ball necklace, too. I was such a fucking stud. (laughs) So... One thing I do remember talking about Y2K is I was my grandma, God rest her soul. She passed uh, a few months ago. We were there at the house having a little potluck or whatever it was. And I remember I was in the basement and they had fucking clear containers of like dry goods. There was like rice and there was popcorn kernels and there was like other shit. (laughs) And it was like a piece of masking tape that was like cracked and faded. And it was like, you know. 12 13 99 <laughs> oh shit. Like, god damn this shit is older than my marriage wow. i'm like jesus this is fucking wild dude that what a trip wild. but i mean as an adult now it's hard to really think about it in those terms because we're so much more knowledgeable about technology but like 
a coronal mass eject, uh, mass ejection happens. Right. You know, we get a huge solar flare and shit goes fucking sideways. You know, but I, even I'm not even remotely prepared for fucking anything. No. But even twenty, even 2020, when stuff started missing from the shelves and nobody knew sure. what we're supposed to think and believe. I mean, it was maybe not to the level of Y2K, but right. I think the uh, there was a lot of unknowns. The ramifications were probably worse. Yeah, there was so many unknowns, which was just crazy. So um, I'm going to be real with you. I was only 13 and like, I never <laughs> oh even. Oh my God, he's a fucking, <laughs> we have a fucking child. There's a child been, here. Yeah, I would have been 13. <laughs> so I never even thought about the end of the world scenarios. Like, sure. like we owned a computer. All of my friends, families had a computer, you know, you, everybody right. had the desktop in, in the living room, yeah. you know, the so Packard everybody could Bell. see it. Yep. That's what we yep. had. Lay down tower with the giant 15 inch monitor. Weighed fucking 80 pounds. Yep. All of yep. it. And uh, and that was really like my only concern. From from anything that I can remember hearing you guys talk, my parents may have shielded me from the whole thing too, or maybe they just didn't give a fuck. I don't know. Right. We'll, we'll find out when they listen to this. They'll probably tell me. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the funniest thing about it is I remember coming home, you know, whether it was New Year's Day, the day after, whenever it was. And I go and sit down at the computer. My dad's like, does it work? I'm like, fuck do you mean, does it work? Are you accusing me of breaking it? You know, immediately I get defensive. Like, I didn't fucking do anything to it. But he did. Uh, you yeah, know, did. I'm just trying to get on here he and play the little Windows fucking pinball game. I'm he was waiting for you to get on it because he was wondering if it worked. He's like, is this bitch going to explode yeah. if I hit the yeah. power button? Like, we'll what's let, going on? We'll let Johnny tell What'd you. What'd you do? <laughs> yeah. You motherfucker. <laughs> whack, whack, whack. So... Yeah, Y2K, that's a fucking good one. Yeah, that I thought is, so too. Thanks. That is a good one. See, do you understand the essence of what we're looking for now? Yeah, but it's not going to help me any better. God damn it. <laughs> I'm going to we'll, buy you a fucking notebook so you we'll carry it around and write down yeah. your awful ideas. Yeah, or just, I don't know, text it to yourself. You yeah, know. text it to me. I'll remind you. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yes. Over Overconfidence. I won't forget. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. All right. So mine, mine's just a simple one, but I think it's more or less like these cartoons that came out from, let's say like the early nineties, early to mid nineties. Okay. So you were just a baby. You were in fucking diapers. <laughs> hey, fuck you. I may have shit my pants, but I still watch cartoons. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm in. But, but the two that I'm thinking of is like the brave little toaster. All right. I'm out. Okay. There you go. <laughs> fuck you. He's just uh... a little bubby. <laughs> So the brave little toaster and like laying before time. I'm yep. Okay. That's so like that shit fucked me up as a little kid. Like I'm watching this. I'm like, what was the, what's what's happening to the brave little toaster? You know, just like weird, crazy shit happening. Like I think a fucking household appliance gets ran over by a truck or some shit. It just fucked me up. Was he brave through all of that? trial and tribulation i believe so but like i think i've really blocked a lot of it like i've got some ptsd like shielding me like don't think about the brave little toaster like all of a sudden i'm walking through a store and i hear like three consecutive musical notes and i go start twitching i'm like oh my god this is so awful and then laying before time the fucking mom dies in the fucking yeah, like yeah. la brea tar pit type thing i'm like oh my god or she fell off a mountain see i don't even remember because that shit was so fucking tragic i'm like god damn what the fuck? Why does everybody have to get murdered and killed in the most tragic fucking ways? Oh, it's a story of fucking hope. Eat shit, man. I'm fucking <laughs> crying at night. I'm going to bed and just fucking terrorized by what you're doing to these fucking parents. I'm like hugging my dad. He's like, what are you touching me for? I'm like, I don't want you to die in a tar pit, dad. I just, this is too much for me. You're, these fucking you... cartoons from the early 90s. Cartoons geared towards children. This isn't like Sausage Party from fucking, you know, 2018 <laughs> that's geared towards adults. These are fucking children's movies. Rated G. We were, G for good goddamn motherfucker. We were stronger back then. Yeah, they just want to get you comfortable well, with mortality. Us. I am not stronger. <laughs> I have to get on better help like three times a fucking week. I am not stronger. This have you is ever not brought good the, for me. Have you ever brought this up to him? Because I have to now. <laughs> I, weren't you? Oh. Weren't you? I was supplementing with like Indiana Jones and Clint Eastwood spaghetti westerns and great shit. That was all good. But that should prepare you for land before time. <laughs> but I watched all that shit post land before time. Um, like my fucking spirit was broken. <laughs> I was busted up. And then I go see this. Oh, this is uh, cool. I mean, so there's there's my there's my uh what do we call them this? 
Thanks crimes for, against crimes <laughs> against millennials. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Thank you for paying attention. The Temple of Doom. Loved it. Ripping the heart right out of the chest. So to be clear, my terrifying. Pa- my parents terrifying. were very are very religious. Okay, so we could watch Indiana Jones, and what was the first one? Temp- uh, uh, Jesus Raiders Christ. of the Lost Ark. Yes, Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. And then we just like glossed over too. That was never talked about or watched in my house because there was no streaming or anything. I had to go to Linda's video to fucking rent the video <laughs> tape. <laughs> so we never went there. And then it was right to number three, you know, The Last Crusade. That was perfect. Which, I And mean, then I became an adult and I watched, I watched Temple of Doom. <laughs> and I'm like, are you guys fucking kidding me? <laughs> They and roofied. Like, we just don't want to watch that in this They household. roofied everyone and then just ripped the hearts right out of their chest. Dude, it's like the perfect fucking Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about here? It's no yeah, problem. Well, yeah, what were you shielding me from there? Somehow I got I a pass. Somehow I got a pass on that one. It was Harrison Ford. I don't yeah. Know. He was he was huge. Oh yeah. I even like so let's jump on another tangent. I even like number five. I like the dial of destiny. I thought it was fine I didn't because it. It, it was such a callback. I fucking loved it. It scratched that itch. It doesn't need to be good. It's not going to win any fucking Academy Awards, but it closes the chapter on fucking Indiana Jones. Mm. I fucking love it. So, thought so, it was great. So let's trauma bond for a minute. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> as, we're go- as we're doing. I love trauma. Let's we're, go. Uh, <laughs> were you allowed to listen to whatever kind of music you wanted to? No fucking okay. way. All right. We're in the same club. Not not a fucking chance. I didn't start listening to the radio until I started working at Meyer, and I would go listen to the radio on my fucking <laughs> half hour lunch break. I'm like, ooh, I like this. This is cool. Cars went away. Well, you bop and bullshit. I thought you were just hiding in front in the playhouses or something. I did all sorts of inappropriate <laughs> shit. We can have an entire episode about my tenure at Meyer. But no, I was not able to do that. I remember trying to piss off my dad one time. I turned on uh had to have been banana 1015. And I tried to record on a cassette tape. Mikey, do you know what a cassette tape I, is? I do. Okay. Have you, well, have you, have you ever used high speed dubbing? <laughs> I, <laughs> I used to record shut from the, fuck the radio. Out, nerd. So I had a cassette tape and I was I tried to record real quiet because I didn't want mom and dad to get mad. But I, I was on my dad's stereo system and I was trying to record uh coal chamber. The roof is on fire. Oh yeah. <laughs> Of all the songs to be, <laughs> record it quietly, you know. <laughs> and so I remember, and I got like, I don't know, probably a third of the way through the song. And my dad's like, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, nothing. <laughs> so I only have like the roof, the roof, <laughs> the roof is on fire. And that was it. That's all I had. Then but I was going, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. I listened to that 30 seconds on fucking repeat. I'm like, I'll show this dad. Fuck you, man. I don't listen to my own shit. Because, of course, when 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 you're not allowed to listen to anything, we're going to go to the most archaic, awful shit we could listen to. Yep. You didn't even get a pass on, like, oldies or, like, 70s, 80s types? Stuff? No. Really? My, my wow. parents had a couple of cassette wow. tapes. It was fucking uh, Carmen. Remember the Christian singer Carmen? Okay, so I have to draw a line there. So it was, it was, stop, <laughs> hold on, let me finish. It was Carmen, and then it was fucking uh, Amy Grant. Those were the two things that were on fucking repeat. In every <sighs> single trip I went anywhere with my parents, I wanted to die. Oh, Christian, my see, God. Christian Rock was n- absolutely not allowed, and thank goodness, because it was <laughs> terrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I so, got, I, somehow I got it. I don't know, man. I I. That's surprising. I didn't know that you. Uh, oh yeah, buddy. I have you, no. So I have no barometer. Than what I... Like everybody that loves classic music and Bob Seger and fucking Ted Nugent and all the bo- like ACDC, I couldn't name you a single fucking classic rock song. Had no exposure to it. Had no exposure wow, to it. That's why. Pink like, Floyd. What's he look like? <laughs> actually, we went to see the Laser Show. The dark right side of what? Yeah, we went to see the Laser yeah. Show. We were fucked up at that show, or at least I was. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, I couldn't tell we went to see that show that's because I was staring well. at the fucking screen going am I falling what am I doing god damn what was in that fucking pen I hit five times <laughs> anyway we, we go to see that fucking show and I recognize like one and a half songs I think 
Were they uh, the group that did the fucking intro song for one of the CSIs? No. No. Oh, that was the Who. The Who, yeah. The who really who. So again, I mean, oh. I got nothing on classic rock. I don't know anything about fucking 80s music. Know a little bit about 90s because they were showing that shit on MTV. And, and where's he land? Out. Where's he land now? A dubstep and lo-fi. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Let your kids listen to real I, music. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a, I'm a huge dubstep fan. <laughs> I told I told my son uh, the first concert I'm going to take him to is either going to be Sullivan King or it'll be Excision. I went so, to Sullivan King last year. I fucking hate oh you. We'll talk about that off offline. That's good shit. I went to Reckless Rapids. God, it was incredible. Damn it, Kelly fuck and, you. Kelly and I went to Electric Forest seven years in a row when our oh kids were God. younger. Took the camper there, stayed for five days, a five day music festival. Yes, it's incredible. Yes. We haven't son had of a in a while. Bitch. Our kids are all older and stuff, and we got other obligations now. But oh man, my God, fun. well, I have no problem abandoning my family for a couple of days. Let's go. <laughs> we'll take you. You'll have no. fun. Yeah, we're I'll all make going. you have fun. I'm uncomfortable thinking about it. I'll That's make great. you have fun. <laughs> Mikey, drink this water. Don't no. hide the little powdery substance no. at the bottom. <laughs> right. Drink I this know, water. I know and enough. Hold to, the, I know enough on. to know what goes on. And man, people that are out of their minds make me uncomfortable. We just have to get you out of your mind. Yeah, right. You we just get you to, out of your mind, yeah, and then we're all to together out of our minds. It might not help. <laughs> <laughs> you need to disconnect, bro. Yep, yep. All right. So I think we've done enough trauma bonding for today. So that will conclude today's episode of Crimes Against Millennials. All right. So, Mr. X, would you like to take a moment where we'll go ahead and do the, our Super Bowl recap? Absolutely. All right. Uh, perfect. Be- you don't have anything. To I say have. About I do have. Bowl? I do have one thing to say. Okay. I do have a few comments, and that really, because I I didn't really care. I mean, I wanted uh, cousins, right? I wanted him to win because I don't like Mahomes or the Chiefs just because. Kirk Cousins is on the Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> I don't know. Are you talking about Brock Purdy? Yep. There you go. I don't know. <laughs> that is the best and most telling intro to the Super Bowl. Anyway, it's so great. Anyways, I love it. Yes, my observation. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's an they, active player. Yes. I'm, I'm yeah, happy. I don't know. Well, yeah. my, observ- well, my yeah. observations, dude. The lack of mental control and stability from Chiefs players was horribly obvious to me. Yeah, like I they agree. could not control their rage and anger. Like, what were they taking in the locker room before the game? It was night and day. PEDs all day long. That's I, that's exactly what I thought. I was like, man, what the fuck is wrong with these guys? It's like roid rage across the board. Okay. Everybody got it an was, injection. It was wild. I, of all the things that stood out from the first boring half of the game, that, that yeah. was it. It's valid. So was it the first half where Kelsey got in the coach's face? I believe so. Because it was it was pretty early in the game. Kelly was still awake, and she's seen it. So that had to be first half. Awake. <laughs> so so the, I saw some comments. Uh, I saw the I didn't see it on the game, but I saw the I saw the picture of him. Somebody memed it. It was yeah. hilarious. Oh yeah. But like the, some of the comments underneath are like, if he's doing that to his coach in the middle of the Super Bowl, like what's he like with his girlfriend? So, or anybody, or or anybody, yeah, anybody. So having had people make accusations about me because of how loud and enthusiastic I am at sports games and things like that. I won't, I won't ring the bell of those types of accusations because in the moment people can get a little crazy. Sure. So I guess I understand that, but all things considered, you do wonder what their abilities are to control their emotions. If in the moment when you know you're on national television in front of almost every American household, if not international, to be able to control yourself. Which I think is a, is a fair point because man, it was kind of excessive. I mean, we've seen guys do that before. We've seen guys get into it with their coaches. We've seen that before. Yeah. Like, it seemed a little excessive. Oh, you know, the oh, way he ran up on him so and hit him. I'm not going to deny like that. that it was excessive. Sure. It was absolutely excessive. I just, I don't like the. When you when people pull out the jump to conclusions, yeah, Matt, yeah for sure. Like all of a sure. sudden he's abusing I think women. We expect we expect passion in the game, hundred percent. And that's more where I I say okay, in the game in the moment he made the wrong decision. Sure, I haven't cared enough to follow up to see if any comments were made. 
whatever. Right. Right, wrong, or indifferent. But that's my take on that situation. I think that I think the switch that flipped flipped it for me. And again, I don't here and there, but the the comment was if your daughter was dating somebody. Sure. What would you think? In the same token, though, Taylor Swift's probably got the best bodyguard <laughs> ever. I can't imagine that she's gonna, yeah, you know, or he's gonna let anything like sure. that happen. You know, sure. I seen her. I seen this short video of her. There's a guy walking towards the stage, and it's he's got a cleaning cart. It says cleaning on. It. It's got mops and shit all over it. And some guy sure. says, "This is Taylor Swift," and that's how she got into the stage. It was a giant cart. Oh yeah, I've seen she that. Drives all the way back, and then you see her yeah. step out of it. You yeah. know, so it's I like I saw that one too. I don't think that woman's gonna get. I don't think anything real bad's gonna happen. No. Plus, she'll make a song about it, and you're fucked. <laughs> yeah. You are so <laughs> fucked. Blackballed for yeah, fucking ever. Ever. All right. So, I don't have a lot to say about the Super Bowl. My ass is still absolutely chapped that the Lions weren't there. But yep. I don't want to spend any time talking about whether the Lions would have won or lost. That's neither here nor there. Didn't right. matter. They weren't there. We'll talk about that in plenty of future episodes. Yeah. But. I thought the game was boring as a motherfucker. Same. I thought that it was funny that a lot of the decisions that were made on both sides of the ball, I guess I'd been trained by Dan Campbell and his gigantic fucking sack yep. to go for it on fourth down. These pansy ass punts or fucking kicking field goals. I'm like, this is boring as fuck. I've realized that I do need a little bit of a dopamine hit or an adrenaline hit when it comes to this shit, because I was literally bored to fucking tears for almost that entire game yeah tell you how boring it was i painted my bathroom fucking ceiling during that game <laughs> <laughs> it's like well i guess i may as well go finish this up while this game's going you know and if i heard the commercial come on i'd run out there and try to watch the commercial for sure. you know the only other thing that i'll liken to what i enjoyed about the super bowl specifically mm-hmm. i love the fucking halftime show I thought that was great, too. So now I'm not so obtuse that I don't get a little giggle out of it. Because, like, when the Rolling Stones performed at halftime, mm-hmm. and my parents and Jessica's parents were like, oh, this is great, bebopping along, singing and shit. <laughs> now, this is dumb as fuck. <laughs> I'm looking at my, my 10 and 11-year-old last or on Sunday night watching it, and I'm fucking bopping my head to Usher, and Jessica's like, oh, yeah, this is the good stuff. You know, Ludacris comes out and fucking Will Love I am's John. out there, yeah. you know, and I'm like, this is fucking great. And they're kind of looking at me like, God damn, dad, what the fuck? <laughs> and I'm like, all right, I get it. Yep, I get it. But I mean, for the Super Bowl, it, it kind of is what it is. And maybe I have much less enthusiasm for it because of how close we were. Right. I mean, if we think about it, with the exception of the bye week, that's only the second week that we haven't been watching the Lions play. Yeah. A game. Yeah. Oh, I know. And so that may have kind of tempered my enthusiasm a little bit for the specific Super Bowl. But by and large, I was I was not entertained. So many of the other games, you know, the other AFC games, the other NFC games, they were entertaining to watch. I loved yeah. watching fucking Dallas lose. Yep. <laughs> I had no issues there. Yep. I enjoyed watching Green Bay lose. Yep. That was super awesome. Love that. You know, but at the end of the day, I just like, ugh. It was very meh, very shoulder shruggy of a game. I I feel the exact same way. And my the twins are eleven. We're the same. They were like Taylor and Michael both are like, man, I can't. I'm ready to see Usher. You know, I've heard a lot about him. Blah blah blah. Right. I think both of them went in the red room after it started. They're like, this is <laughs> ridiculous. They're like, what is this? I'm like, just wait. He's gonna take his shirt off at some point. And then all of a sudden, he takes his shirt off. Me and Kelly start laughing. Here he goes. And uh, Jessica's like, he looks good. I'm like, fuck yeah, he does. He looks great. And so we both He's, Google how old he is. Do you know how old he is? Uh, I'd have to say 51. You don't even know who Usher I is. I never listened to Usher. <laughs> so he's 45. 45. He's 45. I, I guess 51 based on how old I thought he was when right. I was younger. Right. You know? That's how old he thinks I am. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so... All things considered, though, I thought it was a fucking great performance. And yeah. the NFL did it right. You know, they went after the target demographic, yep. you know, which is going to be the kind of that millennial generation. For sure. So it worked for me. Yeah. Nothing will ever top the Prince performance in Miami when it was pouring rain. That was the best of the best as far as I'm concerned. Listening to Prince sing Purple Rain on stage by himself was fucking amazing. 
But this was a close second for me. I, I absolutely enjoyed this halftime show. So I thought I, it was great. The one last year was right up my generation's alley too. Mm-hmm. You know, Dr. Dre and Eminem. Yep. And that was that them. was really good too. I, I thought that was really good. Yeah. I liked I liked this performance. How he he tried to hit all of all of the hits. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. Uh, Alicia Keys came out there and hit the piano yeah, for just a minute. Great. You know, I like they came out on roller skates. They're all on skates and the thing is swirling. You know, yeah. I thought that, that was, was a little cool. bit of a nostalgia boner. I'm like, ah, all right, that's kind of cool. Yeah. I never spent a whole lot of time roller skating. I don't know that I could even stand on roller skates at this point, but it was kind of cool to see because it was definitely a callback to our generation. Exactly. And what people did. That was huge when I was growing up. We spent countless hours at the skating rink. See, I couldn't because they were playing yeah. secular music. You, so. had to go, you had to go on the, <laughs> that the, you had to go on the special day. I, yeah, special home, day. homeschool day. God damn it. Oh. It's true. Oh. So fucking oh. true. God oh. damn it. All right. Well, I think that's good enough for the Super Bowl recap. I don't think we need to yeah. do it. No, I, play. I mean, no, I think we for touched. those of you not in the know, Chiefs won. Whoop the fucking doodles. Yeah. Kirk you know. Cousins didn't play in the Super Kirk Bowl. Cousins <laughs> didn't play. So he got injured real early in the season and he plays for the Minnesota Vikings. It's close. But, but that's okay. We appreciate that. That's a good fucking sound bite. Maybe we're going to start the show with that. Yeah. That'll be our cold open. We'll be Mike I talking only, about Kirk Cousins in the Super Bowl. I only watched the Super Bowl because of Kirk Cousins. <laughs> that was good. Hey, was, I appreciate I appreciate the fuck out of it. that. All right. So last up tonight is the listener mailbag. And sadly, wah, wah, no one decided to send us any listener mail. So got a couple of things these are spontaneous these they're they're somewhat spontaneous i want to have a section instead of the listener mailbag in its place that each of us are going to give like a tip or a suggestion something that people can use in their everyday lives like a life pro tip of sorts okay okay so it could be anything Related to technology, related to this, related to that. Could be anything. Welcome to Just the Tip. Pucker up. Okay. And I want to call this Just the Tip. <laughs> <laughs> I Listen, you have to do something better because eye rolls don't translate to a podcast, uh, you fucking asshole. You can hear them. <laughs> can I can't hear, hear your eye rolls. You That's the, the problem. <sighs> yeah, there you go. A heavy sigh. Yeah. The pregnant pause, whatever you want to call <laughs> the it. Pregnant pause. The oh, pregnant that's, pause. I can feel that. <laughs> In my loins. <Yeah. laughs> All right. So to kick off just the tip, my just the tip, mm-hmm. my tip, just the tip, whatever we want to call it. So I would like to suggest for those listeners that are out there, if you do not have an air fryer, run. Don't walk, run to the fucking store, go to Kohl's, go to Meyer, go wherever the fuck you can find one. Air fryers have changed my motherfucking life. It is so convenient. They're so fucking easy to clean. They're so quick. You can take all the shit that's frozen, not prepared in your freezer, put it in the air fryer. And literally in 15 to 20 minutes, you have fucking cooked food. It's amazing. I could not survive without one at this point. I don't mess up my new kitchen, my new stove. Nothing. Everything's fucking clean with the exception of that dirty fucking air fryer. And I love it. So get one. That's it. That's all I have. And it's crispy. It's crispy. Crispy. It's a little moist. Do you have have an Instapot? I do. You like the air fryer better than the Instapot. I already fuck all with that thing. That thing was all weird and it's always blowing steam out. It it. feels the same way. Like we just. Doing fucking goofy shit. I'm like, is this thing going to fucking blow up? Yeah, we've never had great luck with it. We've tried it. Like we, we got one. I'm like. I'm with you. Listen, Air fryer superior. I mean, and again, not to be crass, but it's called incredibly uncensored. I feel like I'm prepping for the Boston bombing when I pull out the fucking <laughs> Instapot. I'm like, this thing is just a fucking explosion waiting to happen. You don't I, keep, am, I am not fucking comfortable with this thing. You don't keep it in a backpack or anything, do you? Like, <laughs> just checking. I do just not. Second. Okay, I'm just, I do I'm just not. making sure you hang it up on the coat thing or something. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, well, oh, just in case. Let me grab my backpack. <laughs> they, they built in a few limits on the Instapot. <laughs> well, thank God. Yeah, Let's just good. be clear, though. That's I feel good. like I'm blowing something up the every stove, time I the try stove to that point, Yeah, you're 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 gonna have, <laughs> have a problem with the, the yeah the Instapot. I remember it doesn't actually build enough pressure to. I mean, it can can hurt you, but it's not gonna blow up. 
it's I think we've used it like all of five times. And then I tried to cook bacon in it once and I'm like, this is just more what? work. It just it, I was reading the instruction thing. It came with like a little like, here, try to do this. And I'm like, this is so if fucking bacon stupid. Bacon is the test, then I'm I'm sure the air fryer is gonna win on that one. Yeah, it was a big does, fan of the does, air fryer. Yeah, it does cook bacon. It cooks man, it cooks all pretty right. much everything. That's mine. Mikey or Mr. X, what do you got? Who's got one? You know what? I'll just I'll stick with your air fryer tips because we just did this the other day. Uh-huh. We use I got a meat slicer and I forgot I had it. Oh my god, this is such a callback to Seinfeld. I yeah. love it. <laughs> Don't try to trim your heels. <laughs> well, we'll have Seinfeld talk at another Perfect. at another Absolutely. time. I love Seinfeld. But we use uh the meat slicer to chop up a bunch of potatoes and make fries, like homemade fries, and we did them in the air fryer. Oh, and they yeah. were fucking fantastic. You put your own seasoning and stuff on them. Kelly wasn't a huge fan, but I fucking loved them. I thought they were great. Oh, I am a fan. I That's know, because I, I wanted them, but I didn't so, want to cut so to everything. So clear, did you go to like a restaurant surplus store? Are we at a Goodwill? Did you buy it on Amazon? Where the fuck do you buy a meat slicer? I, I'm be honest with you. I got it at an estate sale. Uh, a good friend of mine. <laughs> I love it. I swear to God. <laughs> I love it. It's on, like... <laughs> is it Art Deco? Like 1950s? Legit? No, it's not quite that, but it is like a stainless steel. Works really fucking good, though. <laughs> That's just so I good. I swear to God, it was a guy that I knew at work, and I ended up getting a bunch of shit. I got like a toolbox and like... I love it. And I seen that, and I'm like, man, is that a meat slicer? He's like, yeah, it's a meat slicer. I'm like, you getting rid of it? <laughs> He's like, I guess if you want it. You know what I'm like? I absolutely want it. I'm like, what do you want for it? He goes... Just take it. Like, you know, just <laughs> oh, take my God. It. You got it for free? Yeah, and it's in the box. Holy shit. Yeah. I mean, I, I paid collectively for the group of, of things. You of know course. what I mean? But, yeah, essentially, he's like, fuck, I didn't think anybody was going to want the meat slicer. Holy shit. That's fucking he's, cool as I shit. I know. It's amazing. Striking up a conversation at the meat department at Kroger. <laughs> oh, M1000, eh? Yeah. How are you liking that? <laughs> got one of those at home. <laughs> I need to buy a 10-pound loaf of turkey. <laughs> smoked please <laughs> nope keep that bitch wrapped i'm gonna bring that in next time just bring a bag of deli meat that i cut myself yes. Just yes. It. that's right up my alley though like you can't fucking beat it i know so that's my tip. i love that sliced that... potatoes with the meat slicer just the tip that's just a good tip one. Yep. all right mr x what do you got for us i'm, I'm drawing a blank man all right putting me, well, putting me on the spot that's okay we're, we're gonna put you on the spot but we're gonna go with the tip to look into frontier there you go. Frontier, there you go. Yep. fiber internet, 45 bucks a month for one gig up, one gig down. Yep. That's fucking impressive. That is amazing. That, that deserves just the tip. Man, I couldn't agree more. All right. That's it. We've concluded that section. I thought that was a fun one to have. That was. Course, because we could be inappropriate. <laughs> so we'll add that to the agenda for next uh, next episode as well. All right. Closing thoughts tonight. We're going to talk about some... Real degenerate bullshit. I thought we were done. I love it. We're I almost know. done. Listen, we got to go back in time. How we got to hop in that fucking DeLorean. And I don't know how far back we're going, but we going. What kind of dirty, twisted motherfucker jerked off a cow and was like, this doesn't taste anything like semen. This is pretty fucking good. Hey. <laughs> Grok, or whoever the fuck a caveman would be called. Look at this, man. We know what it tastes like when it comes out of us. When it comes out of this fucking cow, this is pretty fucking delicious. Who the fuck were those fucking degenerates? Because I swear to God, obviously it was Europe. <laughs> what are you talking about? Dude, milk, dairy from a cow, or goat's milk, any of that shit. They jerking off a bull being like, oh, that's nothing like that's the other cow. <laughs> like, that's a little fucked up. Oh. I mean, come on, man. Think about it. They've been using milk, milking cows for fucking centuries. Centuries. Let's go back. Let's go to, let's look at the advent, the genesis, the creation of milk being drank from a cow. Imagine. How do you, how are you not such a fucking degenerate? <laughs> Then, like, what, all of a sudden, fucking the Archangel Michael comes down and says, hey, man, it's going to sound weird, but this is what I want you to do. Fuck no. I want you to put that long-ass tit in your mouth. But you said bull, and I was incredibly confused, because they had to start somewhere is probably what they he was thinking. Doesn't matter. 
<laughs> listen, what? there was a group of like, de- there I, was a. Gr- I have not heard about this. <laughs> listen, there was a group of degenerates rolling around, jerking off everything with a fucking dick. And all of a sudden, they're like, you know what? <laughs> this is a little different. I thought I don't been, hate the way I this thought there tastes. was some new culinary. Nope. Thing nope. going on. So, I wasn't aware of. So then, so then they roll into town, you know, and they find like, you know, can't say the clergymen because they're the biggest degenerates, <laughs> but you know, they find the fucking mayor of their little village and they're like, hey, uh, you know, Mr. Mayor guy, try this. This is pretty good. It's probably, and, it was... and he's like, ah, guys, this is pretty fucking suspect. They're like, no, 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 it's nothing like what you think it is. And he drops back a slug of milk and he's like, this is pretty fucking good. Show me what you got going on. You know, you know, it was one of those granola moms who breastfed their kid till they were like 11 and then cut them off at 12. And the kid's like, going to go get it somewhere else. Yep. <laughs> it's got to get my fix. <laughs> and he's just underneath the cow, just sucking teats left and right. <laughs> I'm just saying there is and it very well. Could have been a little kid like, mom, guess what? Fuck you and your titties. I got my own. <laughs> I got a whole one out there. I don't know, man, but it struck me as something that I was like, that's really fucking strange, dude. Like we going all the way back. Who the fuck is just like jerking off animals? Like, I wonder what this tastes like. Uh, That is pretty fucked up. But on the same token, who found out where vanilla came from? I don't know the genesis of the story, but I really like fucking vanilla. Don't fuck this up for me, man. (laughs) From a beaver's anal gland. Get the fuck out of I here. I swear to that's one fucking God. Well, it's one way. It is so, one way. So they, you can they get do, it from a bean. Yeah, yeah. You can do all they, these things. They do use it's the, the, it's that's, the extract. I, trying, isn't what's it? the word, though? The the musk of the beaver? Uh-huh. They, it's a food additive. Yeah. Probably in your coffee creamer. Most likely. No. Yeah. <laughs> my coffee is black as my soul, baby. Put that. <laughs> fucking unbelievable. Listen. You're going to think about this periodically over the next couple of days. You're not going to want to, but I just inceptioned your ass thinking about fucking milk and those fucking degenerate assholes no. from our from our past. What I'm going to be just... thinking is, why did he say bull? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm going to use my AI speech generator I, to man, fix that. My brain went... My... <laughs> My oh, brain. we know where your brain went. You fucking degenerate. <laughs> well, I, I considered the source and went, he must have not misspoken. <laughs> <laughs> you give me far too much credit. <laughs> far too much credit. All right. That, that's it. We're done. We all have shit to do. It's late. We're tired. We're old. That will conclude this episode of Incredibly Uncensored. We appreciate each and every one of you that listen. We apologize. This episode went long, but we had some fun tonight. (laughs) That's all we ever want to do is entertain you guys. Please send us emails, send us text messages. If you know who us personally, by all means, slide into these DMs. Let's get fucking weird with it. But thank you for listening to Incredibly Uncensored. I am Johnny B. Good. Mikey B. Yep. Bye. (laughs) (laughs) And this is Incredibly Uncensored. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks so much.